There is a big problem with AI, and that is the fact that it tends to go for the most generic, most obvious answers all the time. Sometimes that's not a good thing. And this is no more evident than in one of the issues that many authors run into, and that is just naming characters. The problem is if you're using AI, most of the character names that it will give you are just way too obvious and commonly used in the genre that you may be writing. For instance, as a fantasy author, I see names like Lyra and Arya and Kira all the time because these are names that are probably overly used in the fantasy genre. And it's a sign that you are overly relying on the AI to generate these names if you end up with a lot of these more commonly used names. But while AI does this by default, there are some actually innovative and interesting ways to get around this problem if you know how to prompt the AI correctly. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Let's get into it. So first of all, let's give you an idea of what we're talking about with this generic naming structure. So let's just go here into ChatGPT. Uh, we're gonna be using the latest, most advanced GPT-4.0, which actually isn't as bad at this particular problem as some of the others, but you'll see that we still get some options here that we probably don't wanna use. Give me a name for a female fantasy protagonist. And it gave us Elara Stormweaver. Now, Elara is another one I have seen way too many times uh, with AI. So uh, definitely something that uh, <laughs> uh, that we don't want to use. So we could ask for more. Just say, can you give me 10 more options? And it'll give us, okay, Serafina, Aveline, and Lyra here. Lyra is one that I mentioned is often overused. Isolde, Eloan, Muriel. Some of these are okay. Thalindra, I haven't heard before. Kalith. Uh, but you're definitely still getting some of those more generic names here. And it's hard to tell, especially if you're a little bit inexperienced in the genre, it's hard to tell whether those names are going to be good ones to use or not. So what do we want to do if we want to make sure we're getting more original naming out of the AI? Well, it all comes down to this idea of creativity needs constraint. This is a principle I actually learned of all places in a marketing class that I took at uh, my alma mater BYU, where I was introduced to this principle of constraint allows creativity to flourish. And so what we want to do here in order to make the AI a little bit more creative in order to make you more creative is to actually add some constraint here. So when it has some boundaries to work with, it's suddenly able to come up with much more original ideas. And this is why if you go and watch some of my videos, especially I have a whole course on ChatGPT that I created recently. If you go and watch that one, I'll talk about my fits formula for creating a good prompt. Now FITS stands for formula, identity, task, and style. The formula part of that acronym is the constraint that we're kind of talking about here. If you can give a formula or an example or some way of giving the AI direction, that constraint allows it to actually get more creative than it is by default. So what we want to do to create names is actually find a way to provide a formula or provide examples that allow it to have that constraint. So let's go ahead and open a new chat and we can start with something very simple here, okay? Um, so let's give it a constraint of just including a few letters. This alone can make it a lot better. So we can say, give me 10 names for a female fantasy protagonist that include the letters N, a and S. Okay, and that alone is going to give us very different sounding names. Uh, so we have Anastaria, Nasira, Sanara. These are names that you're not going to be able to find in most traditional fantasy names, but it's getting it much closer to something more original, that, which is what we are looking for here. You could try this again. Now do it with the letters D. R and U, right? And we get Dorinda, Arunda, Rudara. That alone can be, might be all you need. Just ask it to give you names with specific letters involved. But let's say we wanna try a different tactic. And in this case, we're gonna do a chain of thought prompt where we're asking it to retrieve some information and then use that information in order to name our characters. So we're gonna say, 
What are some common naming elements in Anglo-Saxon names? Um, so that's like if we wanted to do something very Tolkien-esque and have a lot of, you know, the Anglo-Saxon influence on the naming situation, uh, you could do that here. So we're bringing in some elements of Anglo-Saxon names here. And you could just ask it to give you some names based on this. Uh, but let's say you wanted to take it to the next level and really kind of combine different cultures. So you're not obviously drawing too much from any one culture. So I could then ask it another prompt and say, what about ancient, I don't know, Siberian naming conventions? And now it's going to give me more from ancient Siberia. Uh, so we get Turkic, Turkic names. Uh, things like that. We have some themes of uh, nature and animals, strength and valor, Mongolic names. This is very interesting. So it's giving us, you know, different cultures here. Um, and so now I'm going to say, now give me uh, 10 fantasy names for a female protagonist that incorporates elements from all of these cultures. And you know, maybe it could be better because we still have an Alara here, right? Um, but some of these are definitely better uh, than we had before. We have uh, Yiva Batu, Lara Mirka, uh, and they definitely have a sort of ancient feel to them because of what we were using here. Now, another way you could do this, let's go ahead and pretend we are just using this exact same beginner prompt here. So let's go, go ahead and open up a new chat and say, what are some common naming elements in Anglo-Saxon names? It's going to give us the answer and then say, um, create a fantasy version of these. And since it's giving us prefixes and suffixes um, and suffixes don't sound the same and are not spelled the same, but are used in the same way. And what we're doing here is we're basically creating a language, right? We're creating a language that's sort of based on Anglo-Saxon, um, but it's, it's different, right? And so, yeah, we're given a bunch of prefixes and suffixes uh, similar to what we have here. Uh, but meaning different things and spelled different ways. Uh, so now we can say using those new prefixes and suffixes, create some fantasy names for a female protagonist. And now it's using this whole kind of language elements that we've created here, create these brand new names. So we have Fingariel, like that sounds pretty cool to me. Taran Dornwin, right? Uh, and some of these are pretty long. So maybe something you could also do is just continue this and say, can you make shorter versions of those names? Like what people might use as a nickname? And then we have Taran, Vorna, Lith, Glaren, Rin, Zeph. Fang, Hilda, Thara, Kren. Uh, and so this could be a situation in your book if you have like um, names here that are too long or maybe that's their full name, but they go by a shorter name. That's a good idea here. Now I've been using fantasy names here, but you could easily apply this to science fiction. And if you're using more modern names, you can apply this as well. Just understand that these names need to be names that actually could exist in real life, in which case you're probably not going to run into as many of an issue of uh, chat GPT making things uh, super obvious and going to specific names that are uh, overly obvious. But in general, you can use some of these same principles. Even even something as simple as just adding a few letters and just saying, give me some regular names from somebody that lives in this country that includes these two letters. That's all you need to do. And that alone is going to give you much more interesting and uh, less commonly used names from ChatGPT. So to give you just a quick example of that, let's just say, give me some common names for a Russian male that I can use in my spy thriller book. 
make sure the name includes letters R and N. I don't know. You can just add whatever you want. Dimitri, uh, that actually doesn't include the word, uh, the letter N, uh, but uh, it does get most of these right here. So uh, you could feel free to work with these. These are going to be much less commonly used by the AI if you give it even that small amount of constraint. Now, if you want to understand more about how to use ChatGPT and other chatbots, this is the kind of thing that I go over in my channel all the time. I have a full course that I've created on ChatGPT. It's available on YouTube for free for you to check out. So go ahead and check out that video next, and I will see you in the next video.